as the largest film producing country in the world and as representatives here who are involved in creating the most accessible form of art and entertainment with the widest reach, it is important for us to understand each other and to assess our work in films and where we are headed as a community, as social representatives and indeed as a nation. The badge of the largest film producing country in the world is worn by us with immense pride. It is also something that we need to guard zealously and with a degree of responsibility. For ours is a constantly evolving society. It is also a society that is deeply rooted in strong traditions of differing cultures, foods, languages, customs, and faiths. A learned judge in the state of Madhya Pradesh in a case that dealt with the power of the state to select textbooks for children said this, it is our firm belief no, it is a conviction which constitutes one of the basic values of a free society to which we are wedded in our constitution, that there must be freedom not only for the thought that we cherish, but also for the thought that we hate. He, he continued and said, the standards that we set for our censors must make, it a must make a substantial allowance in favor of freedom, thus leaving a vast area for creative art to interpret life and society with some of its foibles along with what is good. The Central Board of Film Certification, popularly known across the nation as the Censor Board, is one of the most maligned government organizations in the country. Criticism against us arises mainly due to what is perceived as a lack of transparency on the part of CBFC, but also, I'm, I'd like to say, due to a lack of public awareness. The CBFC walks a very tight rope between filmmakers who cry for freedom of expression and a public who pretend or genuinely believe that they are the custodians of the morals and values of our society. We all know, however, that one man's food is another man's poison and that the morals and values of a particular society are not necessarily those of another. There is a need for the CBFC to constantly assess the public mood current social trends and refine the process of certification accordingly. For instance, the CBFC is often criticized for a lack of consistency in applying guidelines for certification. And in our previous meeting, we discussed that at length. This is very obviously true. However, the films that emerge from the different parts of this country are not of a type. Those watching them are from different social groups and enjoy hugely different tolerance levels for the various trends that exist. Humor, alas, is not part of our psyche, not a part of our disposition and conspicu conspicuously absent in our art expressions. As a result, we are quick to take umbrage at the least suspicion of attack against our person, our community, our social type or our religious affiliation. To be honest with you, as a person with a background in the classical arts, when I was asked to serve this organization, one of the first things that caught my eye was the logo. It was that of a sliced film. To me, it denoted a certain presumptuous and aggressive intent that baffled me. This is not what the organization is about, I asked. Is it still an organization with the rule book authored by hardliners with no hold on reality? I believe strongly that it is, the, it is best that we cease to, all of us as a people, cease to identify the board loosely as the censor board, for then we will remain what it says. May I remind all of us that this is a certification board. We also have recommended to our ministry that instead of calling ourselves the Central Board of Film Certification, that we might choose to call ourselves the Indian Board of Film Certification or classification even. We have moved emphatically into a global mainstream and our nation has gained stature in the global fellowship of nations. As such, the tag of central doesn't apply. Perhaps we may consider replacing it with the word Indian, which is something that we are all so proud to be. As a dancer and a very proud one, and I'm sure the dancer and Kamal Hassan will bear me out, that the classical and folk dancer in this country is often looked upon by intellectuals as conservative and traditional, and therefore far removed from contemporary mediums of art like films. To set the record straight, we are neither good nor conservative. 
We deal with verse that drips of Shringara and concepts of sexuality that surely need censorship. Fortunately for us though, we have no act that governs our expression and especially one that is caught in a time wrap like the Cinematogra Cinematographic Act dated back to 1952. It's pertinent now in the season of Marguerite to say that the latest release of the feature film Dirty Picture starring Vidya Balan this week across India highlights the position of the dancing item girl in cinema with voyeurism as the central focus of the film. It makes for an interesting comparison while watching our own classical divas performing this month in Chennai, says Anita Ratnam. She adds, cinema and classical dance are blurring borders more than ever before. And unlike the mid 20th century, when there was a con conscious cross illumination between both worlds, the present preoccupation with glamour and seduction is directly inspired and appropriated from the silver screen, though not publicly acknowledged. I would add to Anita's statement and say that the problem is that the classical dancer doesn't have the verve or the talent of a counterpart in films. There is the cause of the documentary filmmaker that I hope will find a solution and catch the attention of the mainstream filmmaker. Very often, these men and women struggle to complete their documentary, dealing with subjects that are close to their hearts and to the conscience of society, with no guaranteed income no certainty of payback. There is no forum in the country that the documentary can even squeeze into, no pocket theatres for him to show his film with pride, and no patience in civil society to view this genre of film. And yet hundreds of them continue to speak the alternative voice. To support them, we must propose a different categorization and a different set of norms for their classification and payment. In fact, I've suggested that they do not pay the kind of rates, certainly not the kind of rates that uh, the others do, but in fact even a waiving of the payment. Our esteemed filmmakers here would be aware of how the certification process functioned earlier, queuing, waiting, leading to inevitability to what some people referred to as bribing. In order that we move forward in an atmosphere of complete transparency, we are delighted that we now have a process for applying for the classification of a film online. And what might be of immense satisfaction to all of you is that this online process includes a cutoff date by which the classification will be made and that the issue of the classification will also be online. These changes are being introduced to reflect positive change. We intend to contemporize the new bill. I would like to reassure this gathering that the CBFC would like to be a facilitating body rather than a regulatory one. The current board has a wonderful mix of members who truly belong to the film fraternity. We have scriptwriters, film critics, film directors, trade body representatives and so on. And with this, we expect to move in a direction where we can just be a classification board. By moving our focus from certification to classification, we could aim to provide the filmmaking fraternity with the tools to reach out, reach out to their target consumer. Indian audiences are mature and informed as far as the theme and content of films is concerned. Cinema mirrors society. Indian society is multicultural and multilingual and so is our cinema. The variety that Indian cinema offers in terms of language, genre, music, dances is quite unparalleled and thankfully so. To celebrate our diversity, we need to exercise tolerance and respect for each other, and we have been doing that. When we have grown intolerant, we have paid a huge price. My experience in the last few months as CBFC chairman has made me acutely aware of the importance of restraints and restraint and tolerance in a democracy like ours. Our own morals, our value systems, our political orientation, our social class, our religious affiliation, all this we guard very zealously, but forget to do the same for others. Arakshan, a film that merely touches upon the issue of reservation without taking any sides, ran into trouble first with the National Commission of Scheduled Caste and then with various state governments. The CBFC certified the film right out. The film was banned in certain states and when the ban was challenged in the Supreme Court, 
the apex court commended the way in which the CBFC had certified Arakshan. In fact, the judgment said in no uncertain terms that CBFC is the final authority as far as the decision on public exhibition of a film is concerned. While we consider this to be a huge victory for CBFC, we are not satisfied. We want audiences and the film industry to place their faith in us and know that we are sparing no effort to do our job in a non-partisan way. We would like to be known as a body that works independent of political pressure and personal biases. Our integ integrity should be beyond question. We are not afraid of criticism as long as it is not motivated by political and other considerations. I might share with you a particularly disturbing experience of CBFC with a film called Who's There? A small bud budget film by an unknown director. The director put up an objectionable poster for his film. A religious group in Bombay complained to us about the poster and our office in Mumbai got the producer to pull off the posters from major newspapers. Within 48 hours, we got the producers to send an apology to CBFC, to the complainant and to others who were offended. We screened the film again to a senior member of the church and to a sociologist. We assured the group that the film had no scenes of offense, but they refused to believe us and created all sorts of confusion to an unsuspecting public. We hope our energy is not wasted in this way. The film industry depends on us to let them express freely. As an artist, I understand and endorse that sentiment. But society in general expects the board to act as a moral police, as guardians of society's values. We don't believe in censorship, but it is expected and demanded of us. One good example is Delhi Belly. We did not beep the abusive language in Delhi Belly. We gave it an adult-only certification. This step was widely criticized, and we were told that we were supposed to delete portions. I take this opportunity to appeal to filmmakers to keep cinema apolitical. The arts should not be corrupted. Freedom of expression means nothing without reasonable restriction. I appeal to audiences to let our cinema flourish in an uninhibited and fearless way. Protest and complain if you must, but keep, it, keep the political agenda out. We would not like to be used to settle personal scores. We are there to help you to make an informed choice about watching films, and we cannot serve you if our energy is diverted towards fighting situations created by social elements. In the next few years as chairperson, my priority is to make CBFC a modern, efficient, ac accessible, and open-minded organization. The industry is getting digital, and we want to keep pace with you. With online, we be able to give the industry <coughs> IT-enabled offices for certification. The tradition of making films in Tamil Nadu dates back to the early 20s. It is also a fact that Tamil films were instrumental in social awakening. This state has produced some of the best filmmakers, actors, and technicians of this country, and an eminent personality like K. Balachandran, for example, has been awarded the prestigious Dada Saheb Palke Award recently for a lifetime achievement in the film industry. The CBFC Chennai is the second largest region in terms of certification of films. Chennai region has certified 205 celluloid feature films in 2010, and 164 films this year up to October. Tamil society is progressive and peace-loving. However, it is also observed that we love large dollops of blood. As per a government, Tamil Nadu government notification, films certified as you will be eligible for getting a subsidy apart from fulfilling other conditions. Therefore, producers wish to get their films certified as you, irrespective of the content and treatment of the film. Another problem faced by CBFC Chennai is that several producers submit dubbed films as straight films with the supporting documents issued by trade bodies and laboratories in order to get a tax benefit. Along with an efficient system, we also want our office and offices, officers to be accessible to the industry. There will be transparency in our functioning and officers will be advised to settle all disputes by dialogue and discussion. In fact, the change in mindset has already begun. We need your support in taking it further. We assure you of our support in making Indian cinema truly global in its reach and content. 
This is perhaps the first time, I'm not 